Welcome back to the program, ladies and gentlemen. I was just expressing uh, to my next guest uh, about their approach uh, when uh, uh, actually authoring their, their columns. It seems as though uh, they take more of a, a human uh, position where everyone who is reading it can relate to it, can understand it. And that's part of the reason why they are returning to AM Prime, uh, because of the contribution to the conversation surrounding well, t tell me if you've gotten tired of hearing this term, crime talk here in TNT. That gentleman is Mr. Noble Philip, and he is uh, with us virtually. Good morning, sir, and uh, welcome to the program. Good morning. Thanks for having me again. Uh, thanks for joining us. I want to actually, uh, the last commentary by my last guest, Mr. David Abdullah, he raised a point that uh, oftentimes we focus on, on the soft targets rather than the hard targets. And that also seems to be something that you mention in your column. We, we always look for quick fixes rather than stopping the problem. So let me start there. If we are taking this approach, this constant approach, then rather than solving the issue, we're looking at quick fixes. Does any crime plan or conversation towards a crime plan in Trinidad and Tobago make any sense if the approach is already off before even entering into such that that becomes a problem because if you are believing that to solve crime you need to have police and big guns and in one instance some years ago armored personal vehicles then you are not dealing with it is what i call using a mob to solve a problem of a leak um, you have to find a leak. And in this case, the issue of the leak is the way in which we have treated those who are less fortunate in the society. And until we can deal with that, we will not solve crime. Mm -hmm. And that goes to another argument. It seems as though here in TNT we are led to believe that uh, the penalties that already exist are not severe enough. And quite <laughs> frankly, many might argue it's not the severity of the penalties the enforcement uh, but is that again we're, we're being led like sheep where that also may not necessarily be the case it's another distraction it is a distraction mm -hmm. um, let us be very clear the problem we have in Trinidad is a lack of detection and as we saw last week in the courts uh, Justice Henderson was complaining that the quality of the evidence against criminals is weak. Mm -hmm. So if you have low detection, weak evidence, then you, you are going to continue to allow the criminals free reign to do whatever they want to do. Um, the reality as well is that we have now gone into a, a revamp of the court system. And, and I, I, I refrain from saying the justice system the court system in which we are putting masters of the court, which is supposed to help us get speedier trials. But the fact of the matter is that we haven't fixed the front end, which is the ability to detect crime, to build a case. We still have one for center, which is still uh, understaffed and under-resourced. And you have people in the field collecting crime scene evidence who are not trained properly. So what are we doing, you know? And uh, the other thing that happens, of course, is that you can kill witnesses. So that becomes another problem you have. Mm -hmm. But then, Mr. Mr. Philip, to a, a great extent, uh, crime exists in trying to be, crime is rampant. There, there is no doubt about that. But do you think the fear of crime is actually bigger because of the lack of dealing with these issues. You just said it yourself. I'm refraining from referring to it as a justice system. I'm calling it the court systems. And uh, the evidence at times brought against criminals are rather weak. That's only promoting the fear of crime even more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, the, 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 the fear of crime and the actual crime are correlated. All right. So one impacts the other. Mm -hmm. uh, the reality is that um, we have privatized crime 
uh, or I should say security, not crime. We privatized it. In you know, that you watch all these um, large security companies who protect the rich and protect property. Mm -hmm. And then you end up with uh, the police service, which is supposed to brutalize whoever they find to be able to appear to be doing something effective. Mm -hmm. Well, the reality is that the rich becomes uh, even more afraid and the poor become even more helpless because the gangs that fight are fighting in the backyard. And if we think that, that, that things are bad in the better off areas, we are mistaken because things are equally bad and even worse in the areas where the gangs operate. You can be killed. I mean, um, I will tell you something that's happened to me um, maybe three weeks ago now. I was in the Bitum um, doing, some, doing some conversations and um, somebody came to me and said, you know, you could get killed in here, you know. And I watched them and said, yeah, no, could get killed in here. But that is the reality. Mm -hmm. That is the reality. You could get killed in those areas as well as you could get killed in West Morris. Mm -hmm. But we are more concerned about the West Morris guys than the guys in the beat -up. Why? Because they have the air and they have the two of the politicians. They have the, the, the free reign of the media because of advertising. The media will give them uh, uh, coverage. And thirdly, because they are able to make noise in the media about the crime so, they, so that it, it makes good coverage. And then we turn around and we talk about, about um, crime in a politicized environment. So that, it, you know, this whole crime talk situation irks me. And um, it irks me because we're not serious. We're trying to score political points. We're trying to scare people to say, listen, we, we can do better. Well, that's a lie. Nobody could do better. All right? The, the problem we have is that we are, we are watching a situation where the chickens have come home to roost. And crime today is because we have done things wrong 10 years ago, 15 years ago, because the, the criminals today were children then. It takes, it takes a while for a child to grow from primary school into a youngster. And let us not fool ourselves. The number of people who are involved in bad actions, evil actions, I will call it, is a very small group. It is not the entire, the entire communities. But yet still, we prefer to, to castigate the entire community and stigmatize them, which then turn people into a place where they can't get a job. If they can't get a job, then what happens? Mm -hmm. I, I turn your attention to what Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley spoke of over the weekend in response uh, to uh, the uh, mass shooting uh, that took place uh, in East Port of Spain. And the Prime Minister uh, assured the population that state agencies will not give up in the fight uh, uh, with respect to the widespread gun culture in TNT. And I quote from him, he says, this ever increasing total wanton disregard for human life is to be condemned in the soundest of ways. My condolences go to the families who are today experiencing the pain that traumatizes the national community. And this is also coupled with what the Minister of National Security, uh, Fitzgerald Hines, says. He says, uh, murderous explosions of deadly violence that shocked and traumatized us all again, exclamation mark, end of quotation. Uh, what do you make of these comments? I mean, I, I, I appreciate the expression of condolences, but I will use the term from the Minister of National Security again. Well, um, yesterday in news, the I saw an article um, in which the Minister of National Security was asking the question, why is there no outcry from the people about this, this situation? Well, I'm waiting to see whether he would tell news they had a wrong story. 
Because if what Muse is saying is correct, then we have a Minister of National Security who does not understand the crime situation and does not understand love and till, of which he's an MP. All right. Now, Dr. Rowley has announced a $100 million budget to deal with crime. He indicated or suggested, maybe I should use that word instead, he suggested that he would uh, give that budget to the national, to the defense force. Well, they, they've been short in terms of details. And I'm waiting and not seeing the details. Because if you're going to depend upon the defense force to use that $100 million, then we are not understanding what the crime situation is and the roots of the crime situation, which is what Professor Redock spoke to. Mm -hmm. And um, yesterday in the Express, I saw David Abdullah talking about the IMF's assessment of Trinidad. And from what he says in the Express, they are doubling down on the same problem that Professor Redock identified. So are we going to get out of this? Or are we going to just put boots on the ground to be able to kill whoever has to be killed? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and that is the reality that, that I see. And let us add one more issue. It is not a Lavantil issue. Because Lavantil is not the only poor place. Right? Um, and it's not even a poverty issue. All right, because when you think about the guys who got killed in Miaro, the four guys who got killed in Miaro, one needs to understand that, that that group comes out of Kuva, right? And one needs to investigate the connection in Kuva. And I'm not a police, I can't tell you what, what the story is, but I know about that, that group in Kuva. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we should understand that that is not a wild, um, crazy person who came and shoot four fellas. All right? The country, not Lavantil, the country is under siege. All right? But Mr. We, Mr. Philip, the easy thing is that one will argue that uh, it has been deliberately allowed, uh, you know, to, to become that way in the sense that TNT is a small place. You often hear uh, talks uh, around various corners of, well, we know who did so and so. We are aware who did this. We are, it seems that everyone in TNT, except those who have the authority, who are, who are charged with the responsibilities of national security, do not know. Everyone else seems to have an understanding or... A, a, you know. I don't know that they don't know. I think the problem is to get the evidence that will stand up in court, which is a very different standard. But I, I come back to the point, you know, they, they, they trying to catch the criminal is trying to change the outcome after that's happened. And I, I am with Professor Redock on this one. Unless we change the input, we're not going to change the crime situation. Right, and that is why I say you can't talk about criminals who are 25 year old and 30 year old when we are not dealing with those same guys who are not criminals but are starving children who are five years old. All right, and we're talking about about their mothers having to work shifts and having no secure income because you get fire in the morning. Mm -hmm. Mr. Philip, do you think that there is no large outcry anymore because Trinbagonians have now accepted the situation where they've become so accustomed uh, to, to uh, you know, the gun violence or, or, or the criminality here in TNT that uh, they're immune uh, to the, the pain that is associated with it? Um, I have a different opinion. I, I think that there is pain and people feel the pain. But I think that there's a hopelessness as well. 
you know, and in all in all our conversations, and that's why I, I object to what Minister Hines said yesterday in the Newsday, in all our situations, we have to recognize the hopelessness that is being felt by the citizens of Trinidad and Tobago, right? And until and unless we understand the contribution that Mrs. Salman Bash made about the need for us to have a better infrastructure and resources to increase our detection rates, we are going to keep our people in hopelessness. Mm. Until and unless we get community policing that allows us to rebuild the trust of the community with the police, we are going to remain in hopelessness. Mr. Philip, hopelessness, does that equal to political control? Is that why crime has become such a politicized issue? No, no. Hopelessness is a withdrawal from the political process. The, the point that says, you know, neither party or no party can help us. Hmm. All right? That is the hopelessness. Mm -hmm. The hopelessness is, is, I don't want to go out at night, you know, because what I want to do will put me at risk. Therefore, I would remain indoors, yeah. right? That is the hopelessness I'm talking about. And and what we are seeing, however, is the the political animals snatching up this hopelessness, turning it into a crime situation rather than a hope situation. And the, I'm not talking a particular party. <laughs> the, the, uh, the, the essence of optimism, right? And that's become the issue, right? Um, you know, I'll tell you something that irks me. A lot of things irk me, but I'll tell you something that irks me. We talk about crime, and there, there was a symposium at the chamber talking about um, the economic outlook. And in that symposium, not a single person committed to helping the schools not a single person. This is where it starts, right? But he, but every morning that something happens, like it happened over the weekend, you would find Mr. Bodo, you find somebody else jumping up and saying, you know, stop the crime and blaming the government. Mm -hmm. Well, it's easy to blame the government. But my thing is, yes, you have a responsibility, but we have a responsibility. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we need to, to put our act together rather than simply say, the government has failed. Mm -hmm. We are contributing to crime. Yes, very much so. An excellent point there, Mr. Philip, uh, to conclude this morning's conversation. Thank you very much once more, sir, for your contribution uh, and also uh, for your column, uh, of which uh, really has uh, given great uh, perspective. So thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much for having me. Always a pleasure. Well, I, uh, I could appreciate uh, the final point that uh, Mr. Philip made there in respect to our responsibility as citizens here in TNT. Now, whilst we do live in a sense of fear and hopelessness, the uh, continued silence on our part, um, and at times people, uh, you are aware of someone who is doing something wrong or has done something wrong and you stay quiet, you are contributing to the problem here in TNT you are always contributing and, and you know one thing i'd like to also point out and it might be minor but it, it goes in line with the mindset and the attitude if someone breaks a one-way system or a red light and happens to be pulled over by the police and is ticketed they get they get frustrated they get upset saying go after the real criminals you're targeting poor people if you have uh, you know whatever the case may be you just broke a law it's the law. You just broke a law. And that doesn't make you a hardened criminal, but you still committed a crime. And the point is, ladies and gentlemen, is that attitude that we have, that this don't care mindset, we can do whatever we want, we'll just get away with it. No, that has to change as well, ladies and gentlemen, because that is a major part of all issues here in TNT. Let's take a break here on the program. We'll be right back. <laughs> 